Welcome to the June edition of What's in Bloom at the Ruth Bancroft Garden. We prepare a sheet each month to hand out to all our visitors, uh, giving a selection of the plants that are in bloom in that particular month in the garden. And so uh, in this video, we're gonna do a selection of that selection. What's in Bloom, June 2023. Here we have a plant called Diplicus Eleanor. So this is one of the sticky monkey flowers, which are California native plants. And they used to be called Mimulus and were placed in the family Scrofulariaceae. But there's been a lot of revisions in, uh, in the Scrofulariaceae. And uh, this plant now is in a new family called Frymaceae. Still the same old plant, just changing the way we classify it. So uh, this particular selection named Eleanor um, is very similar to Diplicus orontiacus, which is the common monkey flower we see all over the place in the Bay Area and uh, in the uh, coast ranges of, of Northern California. Um, and it also bears some resemblance to one called uh, Diplicus grandiflorus. Uh, what we really like about this particular selection is the way that the yellow flower has a white edging on the petals and uh, two orange sort of spatula shaped splotches in the middle there that add interest to it. A uh, very free flowering plant. You can see how many flowers are on it now and it flowers for quite a while. Diplicus Eleanor. This large shrub I'm standing next to is Mahonia fremontii with its yellow flowers. Uh, it's native to the West United States, has a big distribution in several states. And uh, so Mahonia belongs to the family Berberidaceae. And uh, there has been some controversy. Some authors favor including Mahonia in a larger concept of the genus Berberus, and some prefer keeping Mahonia as a separate genus. So we're calling it Mahonia for the time being. But anyhow, uh, this is a very large growing shrub with lots and lots of yellow flowers in the springtime and then followed by um, orange berries later on in the summer. So it's uh, attractive on both occasions and uh, a very drought tolerant, wonderful native shrub, Mahonia or Berberus fremontii. There are lots of wonderful plants in South Africa in the family Proteaceae. And uh, the, the type genus of the family, Protea, is well represented there. Uh, the name uh, Proteaceae is taken from the genus Protea. But another group in South Africa in the same family are these, the pincushions. So these are leucospermums. And uh, the name pincushion bush comes because they have very long stigmas. And those stigmas protrude out and uh, make, it, make the flower head look like a pincushion. Uh, this particular one is called Leucospermum reflexum. And reflexum means that the flowers are reflexed or uh, bent downward. And I think you can see here that in, initially the uh, stigmas stick in all directions. But then later on, as the flower matures, they all bend downwards and uh, have this downswept appearance. And that is uh, sort of reminiscent of a rocket taking off. So it's the rocket pincushion is the common name for it. Uh, this plant didn't even bloom at all last year. Uh, we had neglected to cut it back, which we're supposed to do periodically after it blooms, in order to keep it bushy and uh, and uh, how, and, and yet leave other stems that are going to bloom in the next year. And so we had to cut it back more than uh, usual, and it didn't bloom for a year. But now here it is back again in action, Leucospermum reflexum. The genus Dicia belongs to the bromeliad family, the family to which the pineapples come from. And uh, they occur in uh, mostly Brazil, but southward into Uruguay, Paraguay, and Argentina. And they're very spiky, uh, stemless rosette plants that form a clump usually. And uh, this one here is a hybrid done by a breeder in Southern California named Bill Baker. Uh, Bill is no longer with us, but he really did revolutionize uh, the dikias because uh, before, when Ruth started the garden, she really liked the dikias and she uh, planted a number of them in the garden. But mostly these had green leaves. Uh, they had tall flower spikes with orange flowers. Uh, yellow and orange are the only flower colors in the genus. Uh, but the leaf color uh, 
was moved forward tremendously by Bill's hybridizing efforts. So he brought in purple-leaved ones and silvery ones and got um, dark purple, almost black leaves with white teeth and very exciting combinations. Uh, or like this one, uh, a purplish leaf with a dusting of silvery scales on it. Uh, really made the leaves much more interesting. And then these beautiful flowers, uh, in this case, the sepals are red and the uh, flowers are orange, uh, are like icing on the cake. Uh, so in, in the bromeliad family, there are only three petals. And so here, those three petals are the orange part. And then at the base of the petals are the sepals and uh, those are redder, uh, uh, maybe almost to red, but more red-orange. And so the two-tone effect is very nice in this particular hybrid. Uh, the silvery leaves with a, um, a little bit of purple in them are, are wonderful in themselves. Uh, like all plants in, uh, in the genus, the, sh the spines are very sharp. And if you go to pick up a leaf out of that rosette and, uh, and pull it back out, well, you might draw blood in the process. So you've got to be careful around these plants, but they sure are beautiful. Dikya Hybrid from Bill Baker. There has been a lot of uh, difficulty in uh, knowing how to pronounce the genus Dikia. So it's named after a German prince whose last name was S-A-L-M-D-Y-C-K. And people have called it Dikia, people have called it Dikia, but uh, Y is not a common letter in the German uh, language. And it turns out the way it's pronounced is Dikia. So now we're saying Dikia, but be prepared to hear it pronounced other ways because a lot of people pronounce it their own way. Yuccas occur very widely in the United States and also in Mexico and all over Mexico. Uh, in the United States, they grow in the East Coast. Uh, you can find them in Florida and the Carolinas and all the way to the West Coast where they occur in California. Uh, they occur in the Great Plains and the Great Basin in many states. And many of the ones in the United States do not have a trunk. They are just a, a clump of leaves on the ground, sword-like leaves. Uh, and then the white flowers that come out of that clump. Uh, but some of the ones in Mexico really get to be quite large, including this one. This is yucca filifera. Uh, the name filifera means uh, having threads, and it does have threads on the leaves, especially when it's young, but much less so when it gets to be mature. So they're really rather subtle on this old plant here. Uh, most yuccas have flowers that come out and rise up. Uh, with a panicle of white flowers. But this one has its own idea, and the flowers come out and hang down. And so here you see a clump uh, that's in flower now with the uh, waxy white uh, flowers uh, hanging down and being visited by bees, but bees are not its pollinator. Its true pollinator is a specialized moth. And the moth depends on the yucca for food and for laying its eggs to hatch the young. And the yucca depends on the moth for pollination. The bees visit the flowers, but they don't pollinate them. And consequently, here in uh, Walnut Creek, we're outside of the range of the yucca moth. So our uh, yuccas do not get pollinated by the moth, and they don't produce any seeds. So we never get seed pods on our yuccas. Uh, one of the big divisions in yucca is between those that have a dry capsule and those that have a big fleshy fruit. And in our garden, we can't uh, make that distinction because we never get fruits at all. Uh, however, uh, the yuccas will grow here just fine and flower beautifully, uh, just not make seeds. Uh, this one, yucca filifera, gets enormous. Uh, I saw a plant in uh, northern Michoacan in Mexico that had a trunk so large there was a door that went through it. So uh, that's how big they can get. Uh, ours is certainly a, a lofty yucca, but not big enough to have a door through it yet. So we'll have to wait 100 years or so till we can do that. Yucca filifera. Gasteria is a genus in the asphodel family, and it's a close relative of aloe. Aloe is a much larger, larger genus with a much bigger distribution. Uh, the gasterias are all in South Africa or in countries immediately adjacent to South Africa. And this is a relatively recently described one, Gasteria polita. 
So polita means polished because the leaves are quite smooth and glossy. And uh, so this, when it was first discovered, uh, was thought to be a form of Gesteria acinacifolia, which is a coastal species from the southern part of South Africa. But that species has uh, leaves that are quite bumpy in youth and, uh, and not nearly as polished as this, even at maturity. And it's a larger plant. Uh, this is its own species, and uh, it's uh, really a quite wonderful one, even if it's still rare in cultivation. Uh, notable is the number of flowers in one raceme, so uh, perhaps more than any other gasteria. So the flowers don't go straight up, they go off to the side, which Asinacifolia does as well, and was a source of the um, confusion between the two species. Uh, but this is a very restricted plant from near Nysna, that's K-N-Y-S-N-A, on the southern coast of South Africa. And when it was first discovered, it was uh, found in a forested area where it was very difficult to get to it. And uh, since then, it's been found nearer to the coast in a more open area where it's much easier to, to see. Uh, it's uh, still pretty much unavailable in horticulture, but we're working on correcting that by propagating it and growing it. Gasterias can be propagated from a leaf, which can be rooted, and then little plantlets come up and you can uh, make more that way, uh, in addition to growing them from seed. Gasteria polita. That brings us to the close of our June edition of What's in Bloom at the Ruth Bancroft Garden. But I always like to point out that there are lots of things that are not on the What's in Bloom list. And uh, this is one, Lobivia bruchii, uh, a South American uh, sort of barrel cactus. Uh, and the cacti see very seldom make it onto what's in bloom because they tend to have short-lived flowering events. They, they'll burst into bloom and then a few later, days later they're done. So that doesn't make them good for something that's gonna be on a list all month long. However, they are wonderful to see and uh, we've been having uh, beautiful cactus blooms for the last several weeks here at the garden. Uh, this one, Bruchii, has one flower open now, but a bunch more buds coming, and it's gonna be uh, putting on a show for the next couple of weeks. Uh, there are also lots and lots of things on our website for you to check out, so if you're not near enough to come visit the garden yourself, uh, look at some of the things on our website. So we have a, a plant highlight every month, and those are all archived on the website, so you can look at those. There are What's in Bloom videos, not only one from this month, but the ones from previous months that you can click on and look at. And there are all sorts of classes and webinars and things that we do here at the garden as well. The Ruth Bancroft Garden, Walnut Creek, California.